Hello, dear listeners and spectators. In this third lecture on compositional aspect, you may wonder what the order of presentation of compositional aspect is. I hope not to disappoint and discourage you by saying that there is no strict order. There is no strict order and for good reasons. The first reason is that compositional aspect is not something that starts at a particular location in time and ends at another particular location in time. Compositional aspect is about many things simultaneously in many languages. For example, compositional aspect in languages such as English is about a set of elements that are found in the sentence and this strictly means in every sentence and these elements are most various. Among the very important elements that are found in the sentence and this strictly means in every sentence and these elements are really very 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 different. Among the first very important elements in the sentence that have to do with aspect and determine aspect in the long term are what are these elements? I'm asking you. Can you answer? I don't think you can. I will answer. Among the first very important elements in the sentence that have to do with aspect and determine aspect in the long run are the English articles. Yes, the English articles. A or a, the or the and the zero article. Did you see my first lecture? If you didn't, find it, play it and you will hear the following sentences discussed. The kid fed the cat. This is a perfective sentence. The kid fed cats. This is an imperfective sentence. Kids fed the cat is an imperfective sentence again. And kids fed cats is an imperfective sentence again. What do we have in these sentences? We have a crystal clear regularity in the English language. Namely, when the nominals kids, uh, or rather kid and cat, in these sentences are accompanied by an article. In this case, the article the. The aspect of the sentence is perfective, as in the sentence, the first sentence, the kid fed the cat. And if one article is missing, only one, or if two articles are missing, as in the other three sentences, then the aspect of the sentence is imperfective. Incredibly, this crystal clear regularity is not to be found, cannot be read in any English grammar, comprehensive or some larger academic, that is for students and or English teachers, etc. Someone may say now, okay, and ask me, what, what is perfective and what is imperfective? You see, it is difficult for me to decide where I should start from in the explanation of what is perfective and what is imperfective. Because wherever I start, many questions will immediately occur. For this reason, my approach in these lectures is such that they may seem not to have a good logical order and they may, may even appear haphazard to you. I already partly explained the reason. When someone starts dealing with compositional aspect, he or she has so many things to grasp initially that it is difficult to sort out which things should come first, which should come second, third, etc. Happy watching and happy listening. See you! This third lecture on compositional aspect is a presentation that was delivered on the 11th of September 2023 within the conference Second Language Teaching 
and acquisition in the context of multilingual education, and it took part in Tbilisi, Georgia. It is co-authored by Desislava Dimitrova from Plovdiv University, Bulgaria. It is for specialists in aspectology and uh, TAM, that is tense aspect modality, in general. But this does not mean that students of English linguistics or of English as a foreign language at an advanced level of acquisition cannot profit from it. The lecture contains examples from Bulgarian and Greek. These are verbal aspect languages with a definite article. However, this circumstance does not presuppose any knowledge in these languages because exact correspondences of these sentences in English are used. This means that the regularities observed are the same in three languages and that English is used as a meta-language. Desislava is responsible for the correct presentation and interpretation of the Greek data. Both of us are responsible for the correct presentation and interpretation of the Bulgarian data. I am responsible for the English data. A note on terminology, an important one. Throughout the lecture, the term situation participant NP is used, roughly equivalent to verb arguments as used by Henk Verkeul, the finder of compositional aspect. It boils down to the following. A sentence such as John read the book can be transformed into John read books or people read the book and in both cases, the substitution of the NP with a plural non-bounded, that is, de-quantified NP, imperfectivizes the initial sentence. But if we have a sentence such as John read the book about a politician and change it into John read the book about politicians, this substitution of a politician with politicians does not trigger any imperfectivization. Thus, while John and the book in the first two sentences are situation participant NPs, the NPs, the politician and politicians in the other two sentences are not situation participant NPs. In other words, while most NPs take part in the explication of the aspectual value of a sentence, not all NPs take part in this explication. Therefore, a generalization cannot be made that the dequantification of an NP will invariably lead to imperfectivization. Hello, my name is Krasmir Kabakchiev. I'm from Sofia, Bulgaria and I'm going to talk about how to teach compositional aspect on verbal aspect languages data, Bulgarian and Greek. I'm going to talk also on behalf of my colleague, Desislava Dimitrova. Uh, here is the team, and uh, this is the title again. And now, compositional aspect, what is it? It is an epochal discovery made in 1971 by Henk Verkeul, who explains it in terms of two aspectual schemata, a perfective and an imperfective one. Perfectivity is marked by the simultaneous presence of so-called plus values in both verb and nominal phrases NPs, in the sentence, namely a plus add to feature in the verb and a plus SQA, which means specified quantity of A or something, or it is also called quantified or bounded. So this is a feature in nominal phrases. Imperfectivity is marked by the presence of at least one so-called leak, either a minus add to feature in the verb or a minus SQA feature in at least one NP. As an illustration of Verkel's schemata, the first sentence below has no leaks and perfectivity is explicated, while the other three sentences contain at least one leak and imperfectivity is explicated. As you can see, these sentences are English. 
And the first sentence is, the mechanic repaired the car. This is a perfective sentence because it has no leaks, no leak. I'm not going to explain why it is a perfective sentence, because if I have to explain this, I will need many hours. Uh, the second sentence is, the mechanic repaired cars. Uh, this is an imperfective sentence, or also called non-bounded, because we have a leak in cars. What uh, does it mean? It means that, uh, that, that it is non-bounded. Cars is non-bounded. We do not know where cars begins and where cars ends. And for this reason, uh, the sentence itself, the situation in it, is imperfective, non-bounded. We can have a leak in both the subject and the object, mechanics, repaired cars. This sentence, again, is imperfective in contrast to the first sentence. Why imperfective? Because it has two leaks, one in the subject and the other in the object. But we can also have a leak in the verb. The mechanic hated the car or this car. Uh, the, the leak, in this case, is in the verb. It is a verb which is a state verb, and uh, uh, therefore the sentence is imperfective. The phenomenon of compositional aspect is primarily found in compositional aspect languages. For example, English, Dutch, Finnish, Albanian, among European ones. Conversely, verbal aspect languages feature perfective aspect in verbs, as lexical entries in the Slavic languages, whereby perfectivity is a bounded situation with an achieved telos, accomplishment or achievement in Wendler's classification, and imperfectivity is a non-bounded situation, Wendlerian state or activity. However, compositional aspect also exists in verbal aspect languages, and this was first reported in a publication of mine a long time ago in 1984 for Bulgaria. But of course, uh, this is only peripherally. Uh, what I mean is uh, uh, verbal aspect languages feature compositional aspect only peripherally. Here are some relevant Bulgarian examples of compositional aspect corresponding to the English sentences above with one and the same biaspectual verb and two situation participant NPs. Aspect is explicated compositionally as an interplay between features of reference of verbs and situation participant and piece. The first sentence, I'm going to uh, read the sentences in, in English because in Bulgarian they are absolutely the same. Structurally they are the same. The mechanics repaired the car. This is a perfective sentence, but this is a Bulgarian sentence here. Uh, and then uh, the English sentence corresponding to the Bulgarian one, the second one is uh, the mechanics repaired cars, where cars is non bounded and therefore the situation is non bounded. Or we can have mechanics in Bulgarian, mechanics repaired cars, imperfective sentence, non bounded. Why? Because there are two leaks. As shown in previous publications by uh, the authors, by us, uh, the regularity demonstrated above in sentences with two situation participant NPs can also be observed in Bulgarian and Greek sentences such as the Bulgarian ones below, containing not one or two situation participant NPs as previously, but three. In other words, compositional aspect can easily be observed not only in a compositional aspect language, such as English, but also peripherally in Bulgarian and Greek, which are otherwise verbal aspect languages. And here are the sentences. Uh, I'm going to read the, the English sentence again. The Bulgarian sentence is, is structurally absolutely the same. Two mountaineers convoyed the horse to drink from the nearby river. This is a perfective sentence. Convoyed has a perfective meaning, bounded. Why? Because there's no leak. Uh, the second sentence is in English, it is a Bulgarian sentence, but in English it is mountaineers convoyed the horse to drink from the nearby river. What do we have here? Here we have a leak in the subject, mountaineers. We don't, what does it mean? It means that we do not know where mountaineers start and where mountaineers uh, end, so to say. Where, where they start convoying a horse or where, where they end convoying a, a horse. And for this reason, the situation itself is non-bounded, imperfective. The same with uh, two mountaineers convoyed horses.
to drink from the nearby river. We do not know where horses begin, where horses end. And for this reason, the, the situation itself is non-bounded. Uh, or we can have uh, two mountaineers convoy the horse to drink from nearby rivers. And here it is very interesting because from nearby rivers is, is, is an adverb, an, an adverbial. Uh, okay, it may be uh, interpreted as, a, as an indirect object, but this doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is that even the adverbial, in this case, uh, being non-bounded, minus SQX, is a leak. We do not know where rivers begin or where they end. And for this reason, the sentence is imperfective. The regularity can be demonstrated in Greek also, but in, a, in somewhat more restricted conditions, because the Greek preterite bans bispectral forms and requires perfective verbs to be used in the aorist and imperfective verbs in the imperfect. Therefore, consider the Greek sentences below with bispectral future verb forms and three situation participant NPs. The first sentence with no leak is perfective. The other three, each having a leak, are imperfective. And again, I'm going to read the, 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 the English sentences that are equivalent to the Greek ones, and they are absolutely equivalent, structurally. Where we have a, a definite article in, in Greek, we have a definite article in English, etc., etc. And the verbs are either biaspectual in Greek or uh, simply uh, a normal verb, which is, of course, uh, like biaspectual in English. So, the valley will park our car in the parking lot nearby. This is a perfective sentence. Why? Because there's no leak. And then we can have a sentence, the valley will park cars in the parking lot nearby. What do we have here? We have imperfectivity, non-boundedness. Why? Because we have cars. And cars is what? Non-bounded. We do not know where cars begins and where cars ends. So, for this reason, if we do not know the... Uh, entities, the, the start point, starting point, the end point of the entities that take part in the, in, the, in the situation, then the situation itself is non-bounded. And then, of course, we can have a sentence such as the valley will park our car in nearby parking lots. Again, uh, an adverbial, which is a leak. Uh, and for this reason, the sentence is imperfective. Or we can have uh, a leak in the subject. Valleys will park our car in the nearby parking lot. And because we do not know where valleys start parking a car and where they end finish parking a car, for this reason, the situation itself is non-bounded, imperfective. Let us now consider two English sentences with three situation participant NPs that demonstrate the, opposite two, uh, the two opposite ends of a perfective imperfective continuum by having the same verb form unmarked for aspect, and the form is will sponsor. And it is ambivalent between perfectivity and imperfectivity outside of a sentence or context. The first sentence has no leak and explicates perfectivity. It is the businessman will sponsor the concert of a young virtuoso. This is a perfective sentence. The second sentence has leak in all the three NPs and therefore explicates imperfectivity. And the sentence is, businessmen will sponsor concerts of young virtuosi. This is an imperfective sentence. Why? Because we have not one, not two, but three uh, leaks, three non-bounded entities in the sentence. And these are businessmen. We don't know where they start and where they end. Concerts, we do not know where they start and where they end. And virtuosi, again. In the first case, the NP reference are temporally bounded. One agent, a kinetic entity, appears once to sponsor a virtuoso for one concert, and this is perfectivity. In the second sentence, a non-bounded number of businessmen, one after the other in time, are to sponsor a non-bounded number of concerts performed by a non-bounded number of virtuosi also located on the time axis one after the other, not simultaneously together in the same physical space. Consider now the following Bulgarian sentences and their English correspondences. Uh, I'm going to read the English sentences only. As I said, uh, it's, uh, they're the same structurally. Businessmen sponsored concert of young virtuosi. We, we had this sentence. It is an imperfective one because we have three uh, non-bounded entities. 
We can have uh, businessmen sponsored concerts of the young virtuoso. We here we have two leagues, and the sentence is imperfect for this reason. We can have two businessmen uh, sponsored concerts of young virtuosi. Again, two um, uh, NPs that are non-bounded, uh, but uh, two leagues, but they are um, they are not, but not the subject here. And then we can have two businessmen sports sponsored concerts of the young virtuoso. Here we have only one leak in concerts, but it is enough to make the sentence imperfective. Or we can have businessmen sponsored the concerts, the concerts of the young virtuoso. Uh, this is again imperfective. Why? Because we have businessmen, which is uh, non-bounded, which is a leak. Uh, but if we have uh, two businessmen, sponsored the concert of young virtuoso here we have perfectivity why because there is no leak and if we have a business um, the businessman sponsored the concert of young virtuoso again we have uh, we have perfectivity for the same reason no leak what do the sentences above in the three different languages show they demonstrate a highly significant universal language feature namely Aspect is an all-pervading and perpetual process of mapping temporal features between different elements of the sentence, mainly NPs and verbs. And it does not matter whether aspect is verbal or compositional. And very importantly for compositional aspect languages, and as can easily be seen in the Bulgarian and English examples with the businessmen and the young virtuosi, and also in the Greek sentences with the valley valleys and the car cars, aspect is explicated in compositional aspect languages and in verbal aspect languages in cases of compositional aspect explication, which are peripheral, rare, not by the verb form and not so much by the lexical features of the verb as by an extremely complex interplay of temporal features of NP reference and features of the referent of the verb. Conclusion. Compositional aspect exists in verbal aspect languages peripherally, as demonstrated here on Bulgarian and Greek data. This feature must be incorporated into the comprehensive grammars of these two languages and in teaching them, the two languages, to students of advanced levels of language acquisition and to specialists, linguist language teachers, etc. All Slavic languages with prototypical verbal aspect systems and no articles, as well as Georgian also, must be studied with respect to how verbal aspect relates to the temporal values of situation participant NP reference to reveal exactly how verbal aspect governs these values. These are the main references. And now I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> Error found after recording. I'm sorry. Did you notice the error? I said this third lecture on compositional aspect is a presentation delivered on the 11th of September, etc., within the conference, second language teaching, etc., that took part in Tbilisi, Georgia. Of course, it must be the conference took place in Tbilisi, Georgia. Nobody's perfect. Thank you for your understanding. Mm -hmm.